Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my friends, happy Friday. It is a wonderful, legendary day to have yet another amazing guest. My friends, you did it again. Uh, this community is on fire with just, you know, average people doing, well, let me say, because it sounds cooler ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And this morning is no different. We have Hannah, uh, who is uh, from Wisconsin. And one thing that she is or has repeated to herself over and over again is that she's tired of her family getting the leftovers at the end of the day. So she's got a big why behind her. Uh, and uh, even though she loves the people that she's working around and uh, all of those things, she has a goal and a dream and a desire to have her own business. So let's hear it from her, her story, and talk about what she's doing that's working here because she is having some success. Hannah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Was all of that accurate? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I, that is what I've repeated over and over again is I am tired of my family getting the leftovers. So you hit the nail on the head. Well, it was your words in the um, you know brief questionnaire that we sent you to get to know you. Reminder to everybody who's tuning in here for the first time that you know these interviews are um, you and I or whoever the guest is talking for the very first time. And so we're getting to know you what is motivating you uh, and, um, you know, what's working for you right now as you're doing something new and taking on a new challenge. And so uh, let's talk about that. What led you here? What were you looking for? Do you feel like you found what you're looking for? Tell us how you got here in the first place. Yeah. So I've had kind of like a decade long journey of self-discovery that's kind of led me to realizing it's funny. It really wasn't until the last couple of years that I was able to start to admit to myself and to friends that, you know, I don't want to work a nine to five for the rest of my life. Um, I didn't really know how that was possible. I've always kind of had the bug. So um, right out of high school, of course, I went into college because my generation was very much so told if you don't go to college and get your degree, you're not going to be successful in life. And so I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no, um, no idea what kind of career I would want to have. I've really never had the desire for a career, quite honestly. Um, quickly found out that college is not the place to go if you don't know what you want to do, because it's a very expensive route to go if you don't know what you want to do. Um, so I did that. And then in the midst of that, when I was 20 years old, I lost a close friend of mine um, very suddenly. And that was something that kind of forced me to sit down and um, look at life and go, you know, life is short. There's no guarantees in anything. What is most important to me? And so um, I think that was one thing that kind of lit that fire in me that I want to be able to give the most of myself to the people that I really care about. Um, just never really know how to go about it. So I have tried a lot of different side hustles throughout the years. Um, even starting in high school, I was doing some network marketing. Um, didn't really love that. I'm very much so kind of the quiet introverted person. And so the reaching out to friends and family was not really for me. Um, and I've tried other things throughout the years. I had an Etsy shop for a while. It just kind of felt like everything was taking way too much of my time while I was working full time um, and just not not working well for me. And so I, um, yes, for the last um, decade, I've just been in various customer service positions, really found myself in the last several years getting very, very burned out, um, worked in the veterinary industry for a while, and that has a very, very high burnout rate, um, worked there during COVID and um, people really changed a lot during COVID. And so being a receptionist went from being something that was, you know, kind of cool to, wow, people can be really nasty. <laughs> so um, I did that for a while. I ended up switching over to the dental field thinking it was going to be different. And, you know, like you mentioned, even though I have great people to work with and great people to work for, um, I just found myself very, very burned out. And um, I it started to trigger some health issues for me. And so I was really coming home at the end of the day with literally nothing left. Um, 
and my poor husband having to to deal with that. And so um, when my husband and I first got married, we've been married for just over two years now, um, he ended up injuring his foot, um, breaking his foot pretty badly in several places a week before our wedding. And so we went right into marriage with medical bills. God bless him. He tried to work through it, um, but that bone was just not healing. And so he ended up having to uh, be off work for a couple of months. And we didn't anticipate that either. So that was our first year of marriage. And then we launched into our second year of marriage. And I was very burned out. It started trigger triggering all these health issues for me. Um, earlier at the very beginning of this year, I started to deal with that, found out I was dealing with a tick-borne illness, which made things make a lot of sense, and found out that all of my treatment was going to be out of pocket. So we <laughs> went from the first year was his medical expenses and the second year was mine. And so um, it was probably, I think it was about early summer that, um, of course, the Instagram algorithm kind of just does its thing. And I started coming across the digital marketing posts. Um, I had an idea of what affiliate marketing was, but in my mind, it was just for celebrities or those who had a big following already. And I didn't really have a concept that just regular everyday people could be doing that. I actually made my first commission when I had 58 followers. So, um, the whole time as I was going through different treatments is on the first couple months is kind of a blur to me. <laughs> so I did go through with the training, um, ended up launching my business in a really wild and hectic time. Um, but it has been such a blessing to me because now not only do I have um, my business launch, but with all of the, the training that I've taken and the things that I've learned in this space, um, I've been able to it's been a great teal, uh, tool to kind of heal that burnout and the, the kind of frustrating stuck place that I had been in, um, given me hope and been a journey that has um, just blown my mind. So I'm in a position now where I'm excited about what the future holds because all the things that I've learned and the skills that I have now, there's so many things that um, I have kind of in the pipeline or in the back of my mind of what's coming next. So, yeah. Wonderful. Well, uh, that's that's what uh, we hope for is that, you know, you we can be your uh, your starting place, your launch pad. And uh, we, of course, love our I guess this is this is uh, me using a, a, you know, a word that's typically um, save for university, but our alumni, right? And and we love to have our clients and our alumni, if you will, be hanging out and, um, you know, being a part of our community. But I've always said this to people who are working here within our company or our affiliates that, you know, we can have a lifelong relationship here as long as we're in business, which we plan on being in business for, for many, many years, hopefully decades to come. Or we can be a stepping stone to your success, right? Or we can be both. I mean, hopefully we're a stepping stone or, or a complete launch pad. Uh, many people don't really realize how transferable these skills are that we teach, how they can, of course, transfer and translate into the core four business models that we teach, which is, you know, the, the foundation of everything here. And quite frankly, the foundation of um, how I've made money over the past 13 years and had a business and a career and how all of our students are doing the same thing. Um, so I, I love that you're starting to see the, the, you know, get a clear vision and your ideas are starting to clarify. You know, I, I often tell people also spray a little WD-40 up in the old brain, because even though you may have gone to school, even college, as you said, a lot of times we aren't really trained to critically think in these various places. We're trained to, you know, memorize things out of books and then take tests. And that doesn't really get us critically thinking. That gets us working on our mem memory skills, which I, I guess can be can be useful. Right. But nowadays, even worse. So many college students are, are using a lot of these services for people to do the work for them. So, you know, oftentimes we're not even accomplishing that. But here we are doing that. And it's often a challenge for people to make that leap from employee to entrepreneur. So what have been besides the challenges that you mentioned, which you did mention several, but they were also a part of your story, getting into this, going through the course 
I, I see that you invested in our blueprint. So you seem to be fully committed and accountable to learning these skills. You're obviously now taking action. You're marketing. You're, you're getting your feet wet. What have been your challenges in the limiting beliefs that you've had to overcome before we talk about your successes and what's working for you? Yeah, um, a lot of them. I actually, I'm very passionate now about helping people step over their limiting beliefs because um, just in following other affiliates and newbies, I, the, the things that I dealt with, I'm seeing a lot of other people deal with. And so um, I think first, just because we were on the topic of college, I think that people have this mindset that once you get out of high school, once you get out of college, you just stop learning and you just start living life. And I think that's where some of that burnout comes from is that people stop learning, they stop growing and they just kind of settle and accept their lot in life. And that's just what it is. And I luckily just have that stubbornness about me that I'm like, no, absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not doing that. So that was a huge thing for me. And quite honestly, it was really, really hard for me when I first started because I have tried so many things in the past. And I think now that I've been through this journey and I've seen some success with digital marketing, I'm realizing why things in the past didn't work out for me. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have a supportive community around me with those other ventures. I gave up way too quickly. Quite honestly, I wasn't consistent enough. Um, so it was really hard for me to step into <laughs> really hard to step into another thing because quite honestly in the place of burnout that I was like it's really really hard when you are in that place to start something new like I hats off to anybody who who takes that step when they're in that place of burnout so um I honestly was extremely skeptical when I started going it, I watched for a while I bought the business builder challenge I went through it and that, that there was that part of me that just kept going, even though I was just like, I am not trying. Seriously, I'm trying another thing. Like, there's just no way. Mm. But I was in that place of such desperation where my why was so much louder than all of that, because I was just really distraught over the fact that um, my family was just getting the leftovers of me, like I had mentioned. And so I kept going, um, plunged on through. Quite honestly, when I launched my business, when I started, it was an awful time to do it. So I encourage people, even if you feel like it's an awful time, just do it anyways. Um, I was just starting my, my treatments for my health. And a lot of times you feel worse before you start to feel better. Um, mm. I was in a job transition at the time. It was, you know, summertime. I was in weddings. There was a lot going on and I just did it anyways. And that first couple months, like I said, is just kind of a blur for me with everything that I was dealing with health wise. But um, the things that I, I learned, I mean, I... I have so much more because of the fact that I've been consistent. Um, and I think one of the ways that you grow confidence is really by keeping your promises to yourself. So the fact that I've been able to post every day, um, I've seen that consistency in myself and my business. So I'm like a completely different person now than I was then, just because I decided on the days that I didn't feel like doing anything, the days that I felt like I've got nothing left to give. I hit the wall so many times, it hit the end of myself so many times, and I just decided to keep going. So um, I think that some of the things that I dealt with, just to be a little more specific, um, is... I think a lot of times for people, you when you get frustrated, when you hit the wall, you can either start to blame everything on yourself. And I was stuck in that place for a while of like, you know what, I failed in these things in the past. I'm just going to fail again. And um, I think that I had to learn a lot about what self-sabotage was and how to kind of overcome that. Um, yeah. I was listening to Ed Milet yesterday talking about how self-sabotage is just a way for us to stay in our comfort zone. And I think that people think that the only time you need to step out of your comfort zone is when you take the first step, but you need to every day make that decision to get out of your comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. And self-sabotage is part of that because if we determine in our minds, if we think in our minds, like, I'm just going to fail, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail, then you really are just setting yourself up for that. And we're only doing that because that's what we know and we can control the outcome then. And we feel like we have more control when we are heading in that direction. So I think that was one of the things. And then I also at certain times started blaming everything else besides myself. <laughs> so I went from sometimes I was really hard on myself, blaming myself as a perfectionist. I think that's just natural. And then on the other hand of things, there were other times where it was, oh, I just 
I hate the algorithm. It's the algorithm's fault. Or, you know, you start getting an attitude towards people who are more successful than you because you think, oh, it was just easy for them. And no, they went through the same thing. So I think those are the two things that I've noticed that um, I dealt with and a lot of people that I see online that you either start to start blaming yourself or you start blaming everything around you. And both of those things really don't allow you to grow. And I think when I learned, I really had to step outside of, I determined, we talk a lot about how, you know, I'm not going to determine my, uh, my identity by my failures. And I had to take it a step further and go, I'm not going to make my identity based on my successes either. And that allowed me to kind of step aside from the roller coaster of ups and downs and look at things more objectively. And then I could look at my business and go, okay, what do I need to tweak here? What's doing well here? And look at it more objectively rather than it being just such a personal thing. So. Wow. I beep, beep, <laughs> beep. That's a dump truck here backing up here to pick up all of the platinum nuggets that you just dropped. And I, I all joking aside, that is unbelievable self-awareness that you are um, talking about right now that you've developed within yourself. I love, 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 love the keeping the promises to yourself is what builds confidence. I mean, I am going to borrow that if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, because, well, you know, we're all out here just borrowing from each other at this point. But um, what an amazing, that last, you know, two to three minutes right there, my friends. Um, like, wow, that was really, that was really, I think, the, the, the key, the secret. And I just feel anybody who just missed that, if you're just coming on, if you weren't really paying attention to the last few minutes, we are about 18 minutes into this episode and about the last five minutes to be safe was some of the most pure 24 karat gold that has ever been dropped on this show. And uh, the self-awareness that you are talking about that you've had within yourself to, to, you know, also the compassion that you're displaying in, in practicing with yourself, uh, um, the humility, um, the compassion that I'm not going to blame others, but I'm also not going to blame myself. The humility with, I'm not going to, I'm not going to determine my identity based on my failures. I'm also not going to determine my identity based on my successes that really keeps you grounded. And I can really, really relate with that because the truth is, is that, um, you know, I've had some great successes and I don't dwell on them all day long. I, I don't sit around and, and I'm a low self-esteem, uh, um, you know, recovering low self-esteem human who, has been building my my self worth and my self esteem and my identity over the last fifteen years since entering into recovery and um, some of those things still kind of creep up and and are present in my life and one of the reasons why I'm so able to talk about all of the little um, you know the nuances of this of this business like getting on video and not liking the way that we look or sound or comparing ourselves to others is because not because I've interviewed 850 people just on this show or worked with, you know, tens of thousands, uh, served hundreds of thousands and had conversations with thousands over the past 13 years since doing this. It's actually just because I did it. <laughs> you know, it has nothing to do with everybody else and hearing all those stories. It's just, this is, what I did. And then the, I, the irony is every conversation and interaction that I've had, there's some similarity there with that. We're all a lot more alike than we are different. And so I, I love that also you touched on even getting resentful and a little bit bitter about watching other people around you having success. And it's like, golly, and it's and then remembering that they traveled the same road that, again, we're seeing the glory, don't know the story and again, are, are seeing nothing but the highlight reel 
of their life and business. And quite frankly, it's good marketing because every great company only only broadcast a 30 second commercial. Every great I mean, you don't see Apple out there who's, you know, uh, the, the biggest company in the world. Um broadcasting all their failures and in meetings that go awry and uh you know times where they had to where they had internal conflict and where they were comparing themselves to other companies that they don't broadcast that you just see the 30 second commercial of in in and you know what friends that works that's business that's the difference between church and state we're here to market. We're here to build our businesses. And these conversations here on Wake Up Legendary just happen to give a behind the scenes look of what we all actually struggle with, which, as I was saying, it are, 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 there's a lot more similarities than there is differences. And so did you have is, you know, challenges that you ran into once starting to create video content? And how did you begin to put the rubber to the road versus staying in that like purgatory of like, Oh, I've, I've got enough to start taking action, but I'm not really fully ready to commit to anything. And I'm stuck in over analyzing things and perfectionism. How did you make a decision to target a specific audience, begin creating content and get through that first month or two to where you did start to gain an audience that you could speak to and, and again, build the confidence that you were actually getting somewhere? Yeah, I think a lot of that just comes with practice. Um, I, I think something too that I found that is really important um, for those who are building a business or side hustle or whatnot, um, that you need to be good at making decisions. Um, people who struggle with perfectionism like myself tend to drag our feet a little bit more sometimes. So. That's been something I've had to work on too. I did notice that um, I honestly, like I took my time going through the challenge and um, looking back, I think I just kind of kept pulling out every excuse in the book because I knew what was coming and what was coming was that I was gonna have to start posting online. And so I got through the challenge. I set up all of my systems. I had my page set up for a while and I honestly don't know what it was, but I finally came to that point where I was like, okay, you know what? I just need to post. Um, and being, being just kind of the, the shy kind of introverted person that I am, I was very nervous. And so I ended up blocking like friends, family, coworkers. <laughs> so I did do that first. Um, and I have kind of a funny story about that because I was, you know, I was so afraid of like, I'm such a quiet person and I don't want to say real life, but just in my everyday life. Um, and so it was going to be a big step for me to, to share online. And I was just so afraid, like, you know, if people see me posting online, they're going to be like, who is this? <laughs> and so um, I was, gosh, I think about a month in maybe. And I thought I had blocked everybody, but my grandma followed me. And she's wonderful. She's super supportive. Um, she'll probably end up watching this at some point. But um, she must have had some sort of other Instagram profile that I didn't know about. So she followed me and she didn't say anything, just followed me. And then she started sending me my, my own videos. She was sending my business videos to my personal page and she didn't say anything. She just kept sending me these videos. And then she calls me one day and she's like, wait, is that you? She had no idea it was me. She thought she had found my actual doppelganger online. That's how far out of the box it is for me to do something like this. So <laughs> I that I just I still laugh about that to this day. And she is she's been so wonderful and so supportive. Like she doesn't totally understand what I'm doing, but she has been a cheerleader for me and always telling me how much she loves my videos. And so um I say that because it's probably not as scary as you think it is for people to start finding your content. Maybe they won't even know that it's you. <laughs> like You never know. So, um, yeah, I don't know what it was. I think it just got to the point. The big key for me was just making the decision, even if I didn't feel like it. And that's where I needed to get in order to start posting and just to start getting over the the silly things that we care about in the beginning. I, people really don't matter as much as you think that they do their opinions. I mean, that, um, generally, you know, people are going to, if they leave a nasty comment, they're probably going to forget about you 20 minutes later. So it's really just, you learn eventually that it's, it's not, not as big of a deal as you think it is to start posting. So. I, I totally, I totally agree. And, 
we do tend to catastrophize uh, things and we spiral out of control uh, mentally, you know, um, and, and, and we make a bigger deal out of things than they are. And also, I think we oftentimes forget that if you're not scared, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not, do, you're not really pushing the limits. You're not growing you're likely not going to accomplish much because everything walking into a new job, walking into an interview. I mean, if we just talk about some of the things that are very traditional that we've all done in our kind of just expectations of society, right? It's like, if you go into an interview, you're nervous, you're scared. You go into the first day at the job, you're scared. You go and do something for the very first time, uh, you know, the gym. You haven't been there in years. You walk in, you're like, oh, my God, I hope the walls don't fall down on me. You know, feels like everybody's looking at me, right? You know, it's like this, this, this huge complex. And so absolutely when we begin to, to, to hit post and make – create marketing material out there, create content, there is going to be – some feelings of vulnerability. And I really believe that that is part of the vulnerability that it re that 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 is required to accomplish something in life as an entrepreneur, but also in any situation. Say that, for example, you're wanting to, you're having some sort of issue in your life with addiction or a mental health, something like that, and you need help. Pride is the thing that keeps us yeah. from getting help simply because we don't want to be vulnerable and admit it and ask for help. Picking up that phone to call, for example, a therapist or a treatment center if we need it or somewhere to go get help, that foam feels like it's 500 pounds. And that weight is the weight of getting vulnerable. Yeah. It's asking for help. It's letting you, right? And so this is different, but the same. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're in a place to where we're not doing this because we're trying to solve a, some sort of a mental health issue. My friends, if you are struggling with addiction, mental health, anything like that, get the, get the help that you deserve because it will become your superpower in entrepreneurship. For example, my sobriety and recovery is that for me. However, vulnerability, nervousness, um, uh, you know, hesitancy, anxiety, Fear. These are all things that you are supposed to feel. And if you don't feel them, are, are you, are you AI? <laughs> are you even human? Right? Something's wrong. <laughs> and I think there's this expectation that I'm not supposed to feel scared, struggle. It's just that I need to be careful not to become addicted to my struggle. So I always, as you said, get into this victim stancing where I'm blaming myself and I'm, I'm internalizing that anger and that frustration. So I just chip away at my self-esteem or blaming others, which can be just as toxic. Yes. Because now all of a sudden it's everybody else's fault and I am not able to take any personal responsibility. And so have you given up? You mentioned that you were a perfectionist. Have you embraced the concept that all marketing is a test yet? Or is that something that you're that is a challenge for you? Do you realize there are no absolutes that marketing is not math? Yes, I think I find it kind of comforting, actually, that um, you just have to keep learning. You have to I mean. Things are always changing on social media too. So something that worked last month may not even work this month. So I think um, one thing is the more that you can embrace um, being new. And like I mentioned before, just making the conscious decision to step out of your comfort zone every day and not just one time. I think that um, embracing newness and stepping out of your comfort zone every day are really important. Um, 
And I think that for me, just I'm, as a creative person as well, I think I enjoy that things are always changing and I see it as kind of a fun challenge now of, yeah, what worked last month isn't working this month. So, you know, what do we need to shift? What do we need to change now? So I think it's kind of turned into something, honestly, that I really appreciate about it at this point. Mm, good, good. Because that's 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 the mind shift that is so important. It's It's the... When I'm about to post a video, for example, the curiosity and the excitement of, oh, is this going to do good, right? Not, well, I, I'm, I need to know whether it's going to do good before I post because I, I don't want to put something out there that, right? That's, nobody can tell you, and I say this over and over on the show and as much as I can everywhere, that no guru, coach, mentor, nobody can tell you what is absolutely going to work out there in the marketplace? We are we are like doctors in the sense that we should call this marketing practice, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. And, and I mean, there's more absolutes in medicine than there is in marketing. Yeah. And they still call it a dead gum practice. So why in the heck are we? <laughs> you understand? Yes. There yes. is more absolutes in medicine than there is in marketing because. Yeah the 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 you know human beings we're, we're, we really are changing a lot we've we've modern society and the way we interact with the world has changed more in the last 200 years than it has as long as we can go back in 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 the, in the history of human beings society has of course changed we have these little suckers who can be your greatest gift or your biggest enemy yeah right we, we have our brains are changing depending on how much we're scrolling and where we're getting our dopamine and serotonin and all these things. And I mean, we, we, we can, uh, you know, we can really we can really kind of have a tolerance to certain things that, that's much higher than it once was. And so we have this lack of tolerance for um, uh, uh, for the unknown and for risk-taking, and for creativity, where we have a really high tolerance for focus, right? And paying attention and following through and being consistent, right? Because there's so many distractions. I mean, it really takes, a, you know, a huge, maybe amount of money or something to come in right away to get our attention. And well, that's because our tolerance is so high. It takes a lot of dopamine to get us to really pay attention to something because just scrolling this phone is so it can be so damaging to our brain in the sense that it's 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 hard to because we're getting so much instant gratification with entertainment and things on the phone when we're scrolling delaying our gratification in a business and saying okay I'm not this is going to take some time to get some payoff this is going to get some time, take some time to get some results. We're so used to that instant. We need an instant hit. I need a hit right now. I need money right now. I need results right now. Look at such and such. They're getting it. I'm, they, why can't I get lucky like them? And so we see the glory. We don't understand the story. We don't understand the behind the scenes habits that they have developed, the patience, the tolerance, the lifestyle changes. So what changes have you made in your lifestyle that you've realized that you've needed to make to, to go from employee to entrepreneur, being the one who's ultimately responsible for you showing up for work and nobody's over your shoulder, making sure that you punch that clock and writing you up and docking your pay and potentially going to fire you? What lifestyle habits have you changed, evolved? Uh, whether that be, you know, time management, dietary, exercise, sleeping, self-care. Yeah. So I think that um, so much of my journey has just been the internal work that needed to be done. Um, and so I spend a lot more time now than I did before um, listening to podcasts or um, different things like that to be able to work on those things. So for me, that's been really important. Um, 
one thing that I have recognized that I need to start doing is having a routine in the morning. Um, it's hard for me to have a consistent routine. I work, you know, like 10, 11 hour days sometimes. And so I really don't have much of any time left for myself. <laughs> so my routines have been more so like weekly routines. Um, I usually will take one day over my weekend to be able to batch some content so that I am ready to go. And it's not so much a burden during the week. Like, oh my gosh, I need to make content. I just have stuff ready to go. And for me, that's worked really well. Um, so I think those are just a couple of things that I know that the internal work is really important and then just finding what works well for me. Um, and then I think there's other things, like I mentioned, um, starting a more of a morning routine um, going forward. I listened to, I think is Mel Robbins um, talks about her million dollar morning routine. And I listened to that probably a couple months ago, forgot about it until recently, but that's something that I'm wanting to implement going forward where she basically just talks about one of the things, like you mentioned, we're so addicted to our phones. I have found that the more that I have focused on my business and worked on myself internally, that I'm not scrolling as much as I used to. Um, so I think the more that um, something like this does help you to kind of get past that need for instant gratification, it builds patience and confidence in you that you never knew you had before. Um, so I think that's amazing. Um, but one of the things that Mel Robbins mentioned in her million dollar morning routine is that she doesn't look at her phone until she, I think she gets up right away. She'll give herself to the count of three and step out of bed, uh, makes her bed right away and um, gets in 10 minutes of exercise, 10 minutes um, towards her goals, and then she's allowed to look at her phone. Um, so I think that something like that just kind of is a bit of a self-care that allows you to focus on yourself, focus on your goals before you invite everybody else into the mix all of their you know there's so many opinions on our phones there's so many distractions so um i think just having something like that is something that i am wanting to implement and recognize the need for and i think it helps really anybody in their day-to-day -day life so yeah yeah I, I i love that and and ultimately we have to find what works for us those sort of boundaries can be extremely helpful um, what, uh, is working for you in content creation? Give us one or two nuggets that you've learned in your marketing. Uh, and it doesn't have to be specific to content creation. It can be about, um, the tech. It can be about, uh, what you are, what type of content you're creating. Are you doing, are you utilizing email marketing more and wish you did at the beginning? What's working for you? Yeah, so I think something that I have started to notice, there was this huge push on Instagram for seven second videos, and I still think that that's something that's relevant. But what's been working for me actually is doing some videos where I'm just talking, sharing my story, because um, there's more of a connection. I think now that there's such this flood of seven second videos where there's really no interaction, there's no talking, none of that, that sometimes um, I'll even notice that if I'm scrolling a little bit that I will stop if someone's actually talking to me. Um, so that's something that I have noticed um, is definitely helpful. And then something I think that people overlook and I overlooked in the beginning was really utilizing analytics because um, that has really helped me. I will, when I sit down to batch my content, I'll be looking at my analytics and go, okay, this is the top performing content. How can I recreate that? So I think like creating content has got a lot easier for me. It used to take me so much time and it was so overwhelming. And I was just, I really didn't have a strategy. I was just kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall and just hoping that something would stick. Um, so now I think it's really helpful that I've got some time under my belt that I can look and just see like, this is the stuff that consistently works well for me. How can I recreate that with a better hook? How can I make it condense the wording and make it shorter because um, people's attention spans are so short. Um, maybe I can utilize a little bit of a different caption. So um, those are a couple of things that I have noticed that have been really helpful for me. Yeah. And uh, help me understand just briefly, you know, in terms of, uh, y you know, analyzing your, your analyzing your analytics, um, you know, what are, uh, what is the high level? How are you doing that from a high level perspective and not getting, um, you know, not getting, uh, you know, caught in the let me analyze every video and kind of take 
uh, a whole lot of time um, looking for something that's not really there. Uh, what specifically are you looking at when you're looking at your analytics? And it, just for people who tend to have that analytical brain and may find themselves going in some rabbit holes uh, that that where there may not be quite what there what they think is there. Yeah. So I guess I don't look at it for I don't look at it for a very long time, and I don't look at it too detailed, quite honestly. It's really just a brief tool for me to be able to sit down for maybe a minute, two minutes at the beginning when I'm creating content to go, okay, so people really liked, like I posted some stuff that was kind of funny. People liked that. So maybe, you know, I continue on, on that route or I had some really high performing videos where I was just talking. So it's just picking out those little things of, what is in like looking at what was your highest performing content, but then instead of going too deal detailed into it, I guess I would look at it more as like, what do these videos have in common? Um, what are, you know, maybe write down three things. If it was people found it entertaining, um, people found it helpful or valuable. Um, I, th I really don't overthink my content that much anymore. I, a lot of what I will do even then for inspiration is when I'm just, you know, on my personal page doing a little bit of scrolling, if I see something that's kind of funny or entertaining or helpful, I will just, I'll send it over to my business page. So then I have that audio there or whatever it is waiting for me when I'm going to create my content. So so I really don't analyze it like crazy. And I don't think anyone should analyze like crazy. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of picking out like maybe list down three things. This was my top performing content this week or this month. What three things do these videos have in common or what kind of categories do they fit under? So when you say top performing content, what is that criteria? Is that just views on the video? Is that engagement with the video? I think I look at both. So I will look at, cause sometimes like you can have a really funny or entertaining video and I think it'll boost you because it'll get a lot of views, but people aren't necessarily interacting on it. So I will, um, I try to vary what I post every day. So I'm not just posting the same exact thing. So I'll try to post something in the day, maybe about my story. That's more of like a pain point. And then, um, I try to throw some entertaining or just kind of like those, um, there are certain types of videos that I think just tend to reel more people in. So I try to make sure I'm posting a variety of that, if that's helpful. Yeah, for, for sure. And I mean, you can most of the time tell, but you know, what people without even looking at your analytics, for those of you who have a tendency to go down rabbit holes, um, you know, every single, uh, you know, every single, um, one of you can, can, most easily see how many views each video got, right? All your reels show the number of views on the reels. Everyone can see how many comments you got, as long as you have comments turned on or likes. Those, so those are some of the obvious analytics that some of you who feel that you need to, um, uh, you know, that there's some secret hiding in these analytics uh, dashboards. Because the truth is, is that uh, even as you're saying, Hannah, it's a brief scan. It's just going back over the past week and saying what worked, what didn't, um, and uh, combining that with as you are out on social media, saving in Instagram lets you very, very easily save and categorize videos in your saved folder. You can create different folders and it's like so it's so easy. Facebook does it too. You can you can save videos. You just click up on the little three buttons, the little the little dots um on on any video and uh you can it's on Facebook and Instagram. Um and uh you can uh actually on Instagram it's the little um it's the little uh it almost looks like a little bookmark on the right hand side of the picture, just right under the picture on the far right side. It's it's they do that because they want to make it easy for you to save content. They want them. They want you to save content and categorize it in little folders because that's how so many of us organize 
things that we like. We say we save it for later, right? And whether we come back to that or not, you, you know, it most humans like to do that, right? We like to, I'll save this for later and categorize it into a folder. Um, so uh, between saving pieces that you've seen and, and, and saving them for later for content ideas, as well as, as you're mentioning, looking back over your content over the past week or two and saying, what's really worked? Did a particular topic you know, fire people up? Did, did a particular style? Oh, I did my first talking video and that actually got, did pretty well. Um, I would also recommend for, for those of you who, you know, think that you only need to do what people are initially reacting to, I would give yourself, right, really, you don't want to base what's working and what's not only from a couple of posts. I see some people say, well, I posted one video doing it this way and it didn't really work. So I'm, I'm not going to, you know, that's, that's right. No, none of your first videos are going to work really well, right? It's going to take some time for you to get comfortable on camera. It's going to take time for you to get confident on camera. Um, help, help us to understand. And I loved how somebody commented. And by the way, thank you for all the comments, everybody there. You know, I, 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 it just makes the show so much easier to do. And, and, um, I could read some of this stuff off, but Han, I encourage you to go back and, and check some of these wonderful, supportive, uh, comments about, uh, what you're saying here, because you're really delivering a lot of value. But somebody said earlier in a comment, you know, Hannah's so pretty and she's, she's so, um, you know, easy to listen to. It's nice to hear that she, uh, is, um, you know, has some of these struggles too. I realize that it's not so much about how you look on the outside, but we're all kind of struggling with the same things on the inside. Can you give us one tip about how you've gotten more comfortable on camera? Is there something that you're doing or did that that's make made that easier for you to be more of yourself, have more personality and just create more authentic content? Yeah. Um, really simple, but just practice. Like, I think that's with anything in life. If you start a new hobby or a sport or whatever it is, you have to practice before you get good at something. So I don't think most people who start, you know, launch their business, start posting online are not feeling comfortable. Everyone really feels the same when they first start. So I think really just acknowledge the fact that it's really, really normal and the more that you do it, like, I don't think there's really any secret to it for me, at least quite honestly, aside from just continuing to show up today, continuing to do it, um, challenge yourself too, because I think that the more that I started to share a little bit more and get a little bit more vulnerable and share more of my story. Um, I have one video actually that has some of the most comments on any of my videos. And I honestly was just sharing my story of this is what my husband and I have walked through in the first couple of years that we've been married. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm so passionate about it. So I think that the more that you do it, just be patient with yourself, give yourself compassion that everybody feels really overwhelmed and vulnerable. Like you mentioned in the beginning, that's normal. That's completely okay. But the more that you can embrace your newness and make it your friend instead of your enemy, uh, and the more that you practice, the more comfortable that you're going to get. Because in the beginning, I mean, I was analyzing everything I was putting out there and it's really hard to press that post button. And right now, like I, I just make content and I go for it. I mean, I've loosened up quite a bit in the con if you look at like my beginning content i probably look like just a little more stiff and uncomfortable and now at this point i just get in front of the camera and i'm just talking and so i really just like rest assured that if you keep going and you keep practicing just with anything else in life that you will gain more confidence um like i mentioned before that confidence is really gained the more that you keep your promises to yourself so if you promise yourself i'm going to post every day that confidence and all of that is just going to come right along with it. Mm. Love that. And that's so true. Anything you do in life, my friends, this is not uh, rocket science. It's not, um, we're not speaking an alien language here. This is not something that is so far out of left field in compared to everything else in, um, you know, 
in in life that we that we can apply some of the same principles that we apply to everything else that we've done. Um, could you help us to understand something that you've uh, learned about yourself throughout this process? Yeah, um, I think kind of how I mentioned in the beginning, it's been a really like quite a journey of self-discovery for me. Um, I mentioned that it really wasn't until the last couple of years where I started to acknowledge the fact that I don't want to work a full-time job for the rest of my life and I want to be able to prioritize the things that I care about. So um, I think that I have really just recognized, like I've, I've I think I mentioned before too, it's been such a great tool for me to learn about myself, to gain that confidence back, to find something that I'm passionate about again, um, and to really help heal the burnout that I was dealing with. And so I think um, I mentioned too that I started to recognize that maybe the the ventures or the side hustles that I tried to do in the past didn't work out because I just wasn't consistent enough. And I didn't have a community of people around me that were cheering me on. Um, so I think now that I've been consistent at something for a long time, that's grown a lot of confidence and that has um, just shown me that I can be consistent in something and I can grow in something. And um so that that has been amazing and then just the community here too i think is huge um i've been able to to make some friends and make some connections and so don't don't sleep on that there are amazing people in this community if you are having a rough day just to say hey i'm having a hard time you can have someone that like we all need help sometimes <laughs> you can have somebody that's going to help pull you up out of the the mental struggle that we kind of get ourselves in so i think that that has been really huge for me. Um, and like I said, just kind of a, a journey of self-discovery where I have um, just found a lot of confidence and, and skills. And um, one thing that I have always been passionate about just personally in my life is helping other people find freedom. Um, my faith is really important to me. So whether that's been spiritually from, you know, in church or um, leading small groups or in my jobs where I've been able to help people grow their confidence and find freedom in those areas. Um, I didn't realize how much this journey was so in line with that until I got a couple months in and I realized like, I'm in a position now where I can help people learn new skills. I can help people learn how to how to earn online. And in the midst of that too, I have just found this huge passion again, where um, I'm very passionate about helping people jump over those hurdles that we all deal with in the beginning, um, because I dealt with so much of that. And I, I just, I even see sometimes in other people's posts how they're struggling with that. So I don't know exactly what that looks like for me right now, but I'm wanting to, um, do some more with that so that I can hopefully be a light and an encouragement to other people who are starting those journey, starting that journey and, and struggling with similar things. So, yeah, love, love, love that. Hey, friends uh, listening, would you let us know in the comments what you think about this interview and any words uh, for Hannah? Uh, so we could uh, read them and check them out here once we're done. Hannah, one last question to you. Um, what um, what advice would you give yourself if you were starting all over again? I think first, first and foremost, if I could go back and just give myself a little hand, I would give, I have a lot of compassion for my former self um, and everything that she was dealing with and struggling with in the beginning. Um, but I would just tell her I'm really proud of her for taking another step again and deciding to to do something, to keep learning and to keep growing. Um, and I would probably come alongside myself just knowing that I dealt with so many of those perfectionism issues in the beginning, just to try to be a little bit more laid back about things. I think um, I tried so much in the beginning to, I think I just struggled with a lot of that, with that perfectionism in the beginning. And so I think I would tell myself to, just relax a little bit um, and just keep keep going, keep learning. Um, and then too, I think even just from the content creation point where I really struggled to make content in the beginning, I kind of thought for some reason that I had to reinvent the wheel. And I wish that I would have spent some more time, I guess, looking at those who uh, went before me, who found great success and seeing, you know, what are some things 
within this niche that people um, like, that people need? Like, what are the needs that they have? Um, mm. And looking more at that instead of trying to just think that I had to come up with everything myself. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, wonderful, powerful, inspirational. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. Uh, Mike, sorry at work, fire, Hannah, fire. Thank you for sincerity and vulnerability, says Desiree. Rosemary, very encouraging. Karen says, holy shit, absolutely one of the best I've watched and I've joined over a year ago. This has been absolutely 1,000% gold, platinum. Uh, Ross, Hannah, you're inspiring me. Thank you. Uh, Making Money with Eve said she would have never thought you were shy. Great interview. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. You rock, Hannah. Love your spirit. You are already a light in this world. Uh, another powerful wake up legendary show Friday, Kathy inspired for sure by Hannah. I love the analytics tool is great info. Awesome interview, Lewis. Thank you for sharing Hannah. This interview is very inspiring. I will have to rewatch, but the 10 minutes I've been here sounds great. Awesome message Hunter. Um, I love what you're saying. Fabulous interview. Thank you, Hannah. You are really an inspiration, very encouraging. God bless your vibes and wisdom, Hannah and Dave. Thank you for Hannah. Uh, thank you, Hannah. You're so inspiring. Proud of you. I hope that you'll go back and read some of these comments because these are only just a couple. Um, and uh, thank you all for, I mean, really, wow. Thank you all for um, sharing some of your thoughts. That was only a first couple of comments there. I mean, my wow. Lord. Um she would absolutely make a great coach, very heartfelt and inspirational. Um, this fellow Whis Wisco gal received tons of inspiration from you, Hannah. Thank you. Um, you know, Hannah, you're a great example to follow. Thank you for sharing your experiences and insights. It really helps. Um, this is my new favorite morning show. Thank you, Dave and Hannah. Um, I connect with you so much. This has been in a wonderful interview, Melissa said. Hannah is extremely knowledgeable. I truly have enjoyed today's episode. So, wow. Nugget shower. Golden nugget shower, <laughs> said Andy. Well, hey, man, get leave here so dirty but clean, right? Get, <laughs> get some marketing dirt under those fingernails. But, yes, we're glad you're feeling so showered with nuggets. God's light shines bright in you, Hannah. So inspiring. Um, man, you're doing God's work, sis. Thank you for being an inspiration and get it, girl. Great way to share the realness of getting started. My friends, what a wonderful way to um, end the, the week. Hannah, you have really inspired us all and um, you know, dropped so many practical nuggets this morning. Uh, I hope that this, you know, will all this feedback and uh, you kind of being here. And of course, I know you are growing right in front of us right here, right now by doing this and by uh, doing something that you haven't done before. And we didn't only press play. Uh, we've been pressing play the whole time. This is completely live. It's um, as you can see for anybody who's just, you know, December 15th at, can you see that? You can't really, ah, 1059, there it is, right? So this is completely live and as every episode is. And so we also realize the thing that I love about going live is that every morning I grow right in front of you too. I mean, I've gone live now just in this capacity, 850-ish times, but that's only two years, two and a half years, ever since March of 2020. So maybe it's been coming up on three. Um, that's only three years out of a 13 year career, right? So there has been an incredible amount of growing right in front of people press. And you know what I've learned in that is that everything is figure outable. Yes. And that nothing, people are also a lot more compassionate and forgiving and uh, even at the mastermind this weekend, Hannah, there was, you know, some new trainers who had never been in front of a room before, and you could tell they were feeling some nerves. And the audience was so encouraging, you know, clapping for them, just being so supportive. And that, of course, goes to show how supportive 
a lot of, you know, everybody is in this community. And if they're not, we, we can't come out <laughs> because there's just no space for that here. But there's just nothing to, to put so much pressure on yourself that, that you think that everybody is going to jump on you and laugh at you or that anybody or that mo a lot of people are even going to see your stuff at first, right? I mean, you yeah. have time and space to grow. And even as you become successful, the more vulnerable you get in front of your audience, meaning that if you do admit times that you screwed up or show and reveal things that didn't work or or as as what's working right now on social is giving people a behind the scenes look at your messy life yeah. and that it's not all a highlight reel is working. People like that. People appreciate that. And so just thank you for growing here with me this morning and come back and keep me posted. And I hope, Hey, maybe we can have you on one of our stages in the near future as well, because this was so fun and so valuable and uh, you rock. So my best to you and your family and uh, stay legendary, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and um, thank you everyone for your comments to appreciate it. All right. And we'll talk to you later. Okay. Right. See ya. Bye. All right, my friends, for those of you who are looking at uh, and wondering how to follow her and connect with her, she's the underscore bloom entrepreneur. That's the T H E underscore B L O O M. T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R, -E 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 the underscore bloom entrepreneur. And she certainly was blooming right in front of us here this morning. And of course, uh, you can go and check out her socials and see her blooming over the course of the last several months. As she said, her videos, her content, her marketing is much better now than it was at the beginning. <laughs> Oh, golly, that's not a new concept. That's not a hard thing to understand, right? And it's true for all of us. I want to remind you that all of these episodes not only live here on this Facebook page that we're streaming on, we also upload them onto YouTube. You can, you can find them. I believe they're on the David Sharp YouTube channel. But what may even be more valuable to you is that we strip the audio and upload them on all the major podcast platforms so you can listen to them. So often, or let me say rarely, are we showing something on our screen that you need to see um, that, that you know, obviously it's so wonderful to be here and see the person and connect with the energy and be here live and make that part of your routine. And so many of you do. But if you want to catch a replay, you can just look us up, Wake Up Legendary on any of the major podcast platforms, and you can listen to the audios. They're usually there same day. If you want to get a little gentle nudge at 10 a.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday, when we go live with a quick link right over to the live, just text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. This is my radio announcement. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. Okay? My friends. That's all from me. It's all from Hannah this morning. We have, she has, dumped off the platinum nuggets in your driveway. Pick them up. Deploy them at will. Use them. That's why we do this show. Hopefully you feel inspired. Hopefully you feel positive. You feel compassionate towards yourself today. Hopefully you know that you're not alone in this journey with your struggles and challenges and that you have the motivation and the desire to dig deeper for a more powerful why to keep going towards your dreams. And we're happy to be a part of your journey. With that being said, we'll see you back here on Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, same place for another episode of the greatest marketing show on earth. Wake up legendary. Get out of here. Peace.